Good morning, and welcome to Frank's School. Uh, yesterday uh, was the 15th day of the sixth year of Frank's School, and yesterday I was talking about the book, Back to the Land, by uh, Donna Brown, or Donna Brown, and uh, I, I want to go on a little bit <clears throat> more about that. I, when I looked at that, actually, even as I was doing it, and I was saying, you knew better, I, I thought, Frank, you sound a little bit like a Old Testament prophet, uh, or, or uh, Jeremiah was the one that came to mind. You know, these guys uh, that said, woe to you, ye children of Israel, or, or whatever. Uh, uh, as, and I looked, I thought, you know, I'm going to look back at that, because, uh, you know, there's even something called a Jeremiah. Jeremiah is a, a rant like, like that. I, usually for some religious reason. And, and I say, am I producing a Jeremiah? I don't know. Um, I don't think so. Uh, and I thought, you know, that's been done uh, plenty. Uh, Al Gore with his uh, uh, movie, uh, An Inconvenient Truth, that should have served as a Jeremiah, I think. I mean, he didn't rage, but there it was. I mean, I, I think my point was really mostly that it, 40 years earlier, or 35 years earlier, it was clear. Uh, but anyway, uh, you know, and, and woe to you, ye children of Baal. Uh, you know, I was, I was even looking into that a little bit. Who are these old, uh, you know, gods that were worshipped? Uh, Mammon, I, I use that one a, a lot. I don't know, but that's not what I want to go on to. That, I, I decided, well... Actually, mo most of my life, I, I, I've chosen to try to build things rather than destroy things. Uh, and uh, I've tried to work on the constructive side. Well, anyway, the, other, the main reason I'm, I'm doing, well, that's one, there's two reasons. Villagist. I, I, as I was talking, I, I thought, well, I, I'm sort of, in, in terms of back to the land, <clears throat> you might call me a villagist. Because I, just, I, I felt like I coined the word. Because I, I think a, a single individual, that's just silly. The Robinson Crusoe kind of uh, foolish, not, not foolishness, but I'm, it, it's a dream. Or, or family, the Swiss family, Robinson kind of thing. Uh, nice. But, but really, in any, if hoping in any way to be practical, uh, it, it, it requires a group of people. Uh, humans have always lived in some kind of group. Well, anyway, uh, villages, and I decided I'd go online and look and see, well, did I make that word up? Is there such a word as a villagist, uh, you know, in lieu of decentralist? And uh, here I found, well, there's a villagism, and, and I thought, whoa, what's that? And it turns out that's a linguistic term for a, a, a certain form of speech that's unique to one village. That's called a, a villagism, I think a barbarism maybe is a linguistic term, or there's some term for, uh, no, nah, I don't think that's the right one, uh, for uh, uh, a horrible th thing that's said, or some, in someone's opinion. But that wasn't what I meant. But I kept looking a little bit, and here I found, this is Googling, uh, I found that there was a book called Capitalism, Socialism, or Villagism. Not a whoa, Villagism. It was written by J.C. Kumarapa. Never heard of him. But I was curious. I got looking a little bit. Well, that led me to Gandhi. He was a very close associate of Gandhi. Now, almost everybody with any kind of education has heard of Gandhi. Gandhi is well enough known, but not this man. Maybe, maybe it's because his, his name is a little bit harder to figure out how you're going to say it. Well, and there is a school of thought called Gandhian economics. I don't think I had ever heard of it. And of course, now my curiosity was piqued, and, and I, I started to look into it. Well, it was uh, Gandhi's, but also largely explained by him. And uh, as opposed, QV incident, I use it all the time. It, it means quote vide, go check it up. Go check it out. I should put it here, too. Uh, I'm giving you things that if you get curious and you want to not just hear what I say, it's, where, is there anyone else that thinks like you? Well, I'll put QV here. Um, multiplication of wants. That's a phrase, QV. Uh, check it out. That, that's Western uh, economics is based on that. You want more and more and more. 
Uh, well, there, there's an Eastern way or a Gandhian way to think about that. That no, and that's sort of what I'm stumbling upon. Um, Gandhi. Uh, I read a biography of him when I was about 12 or 13 or something like that. This isn't the actual copy, but it's the same edition. Later I saw it in a bookstore for 15 cents, and I thought, oh, I remember that book. This is the first biography I think I ever read. I'm sure I did it for school. Uh, and later on, when I was about maybe 17 or so, my interest in Gandhi and Eastern thinking led me to the razor's edge. My girlfriend at the time, uh, she re or afterward maybe, she, she recommended it to me. She said, Frank, you should read the Razor's Edge, uh, Aldous Huxley. Uh, it, it, periodically, there's been a fascination uh, on the part of Westerners of Eastern thinking, and and to some extent, I'm part of that, a uh, large extent. Uh, but anyway, this Gandhian economics is lacking in, in the worldly philosophers. Here's a book that I recently reread. I had to read it. Uh, summer reading before I entered Harvard, uh, before my freshman year, there was a whole stack of books and some of them I didn't, I, I was a slow reader, I, I didn't read them, but I read this. And uh, I reread it. Well, uh, uh, Kumarapa isn't mentioned, he's not in the index anyway. And Gandhi in economics not mentioned. <clears throat> now, Gandhi was heavily influenced by a man named John Ruskin, heavily influenced. And his book or short book called uh, unto this last. Ruskin is mentioned, but he's kind of lumped together with utopians in general in the worldly philosophers. Maybe they weren't worldly enough. Maybe they weren't worldly enough. I don't know. But, uh, <coughs> and, uh, well, you know, as I, I'm giving you these names because these are routes that you could follow if you're interested in, in my, what I've had to say. And Ralph Borsodi, his name really stands out in, in her book, uh, and in decentralism in general. And Ralph Borsodi uh, traveled to India, lived in India for a while, was, was very much into this. And I, I guess I hadn't been putting that connection so firmly together. Uh, uh, Italian, uh, born, extremely influential writing. Uh, but his work then passed on, in a sense, to Mildred Loomis. I don't want to call her a disciple of his, but she continued his work. And now a man uh, that lives here in Pennsylvania, actually, Bill Sharp. Uh, school, New School of Living. New School of Living is where you would find his writing. Very good writer. Uh, well, this word, Sarvadaya, I write it there because you might want to check that out too, if you're interested in this. I think one of the things, uh, roadblocks that I hit with Indian thinking and philosophy and economics is the words. I don't know how to say them. I don't have a deep feeling for these words, but uh, they're there. All right, uh, I guess uh, that'll do for today.